Welcome to Forever Wild. This is going to be a very unique episode. We are going to be doing what's called Bio Blitz 2016. It's going to be a great opportunity for the audience to see how a local school, Forest Brook Middle School, came out and paired with some Coastal Carolina University students to study about wildlife and nature and identify species, every species on the property, for the next 24 hours. A lot of these kids are not even going to sleep. They're going to go 24 hours sampling, constantly sampling, learning about nature. It'll be one of the most powerful learning experiences some of these kids may ever have in their life. Come along on this amazing journey and see how these students grow with our BioBlitz 2016. Stay forever wild. Um, hi, my name is Isaiah. My mom came on the Bio Blitz and she works at Bass Pro Shops and she sponsored us with corn for the deers and so we can catch and see foot tracks. Um, my favorite part about it was learning more about how to fish, even though there wasn't really much fish there, but it was so fun and it was just a good experience. So we're going to show you how to make a minnow trap. You just take two two liter bottles and cut each top of them and put the smaller one inside of the bigger one and then you're going to poke four to five holes in them on each side. Okay, then we're going to take the string and we're going to put them in each of the holes. This is the finished product of the minnow trap. Um, you would tie this to like a yeah. log or a tree or something and then put it in the water. Yep. And make sure it's like laid this way under the water so the fish would go through and then it would be trapped in there and it can't go. After we were trying, it was hard to figure out what it was because it was bigger than actual minnow that we thought it would be. So. I think we found out it was an eastern mud minnow. I think that word was. But it was like that big, maybe. And yeah, I thought I wouldn't catch anything, though. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Just having the experience of like casting the rod. And then me and Haley would race to see who could reel it in the fastest. I would win. But yeah, it was fun. So we went bird watching. Well, first we had a few people, but then like they started getting bored, and they all left with their group because they saw them. And so we were just standing there. On he let me borrow a pair of binoculars, and we were looking for different types of birds. And we saw one that jumped on the on the branch, and we and he identified just by the sound. It was a chickadee bird, and there were. He started saying about things like the American, American crow and I forget the other crow's names, but most of the birds are are actually um, named by the sound they make. Like the chickadee is, is named by chickadee because it makes like a chickadee sound. I like going through the woods and like being able to be around nature because like I'm, I'm like terrified of spiders and snakes, but when I got used to it, I just, I'm still scared of them, but I'm not as scared. All right, so he told us that you had to kiss it to identify it, to see if it was actually a golden shriner. And so then he shoved it right up to his face and started kissing it. And he said, it's all in the taste of what the fish tastes like to identify it. So <laughs> everyone was grossed out at that point, but everyone was laughing. Um, we use like, um, the, um, what was it called? The dissection scope, microscopes, um, magnifying lens, um, we use like tweezers. Bug zap. 
Um, we use all kinds of things. Like, we, we for resources to find out what the species were, we, we used books, we used the internet, um, and a lot of books. Yeah. Um, Tell about that fish you caught. Oh, yeah. Um, so around um, 7, around 7, 6, 6.30 to 7, um, I went to look for my group because I was kind of trying to find out what this spider or it was a spider and an ant that I was trying to find out, but they left me there, and I sent Ryan to look for them, and he never came back, so I just put bookmarks on the book that I was uh, looking up, and I went to look for them, and they were fishing, and Brian was fishing there too, and he never came back. And uh, so I just decided just to go, just to go along with them, and I just, I grabbed the fish, uh, fishing rod, and I just casted it, waited for like five seconds, and I, when I was reeling it in, I uh, decided to tug it a little bit just to see if there was anything. And there was actually um, a fish on it, and we found out later that it was a golden shiner, right? Yeah, a golden shiner, and it was about this big. That was pretty cool. And what was, what was the one thing that Godwin told you when you managed to kiss it for him? No. All right, does anybody else have anything they want to say? Uh, Do you guys remember any apps we used? Did you use any? Oh, oh yeah, um, it. There, there was one I used, it was called Leaf Snap, and um, you take a picture of, like, of a leaf you don't know of, and then um, then it identifies it for you, so it'd be kind of easier to identify it than going through the books and going on the internet. And there's one more that you, that you used or something. Leaf Snap. Oh. No, the and there's also... Um, oh, yeah, this owl call app. Oh. Yeah, and you kept using that, um, yes, that one owl call that probably the scared the rest of them because wasn't that the owl that killed all the other ones? <laughs> the great horned owl. <laughs> and you kept, and kept doing and that in the forest. It was like a screeching sound. Yeah. yeah. And, and you kept doing that in the forest. I'm pretty sure you scared most of them away. So, um, Dee Dee over here wants me to tell you about the, like, when I caught the lizards, I would stick them up to my ears and let them bite my ears to <laughs> have, like, lizard earrings or whatever. So. <laughs> She kept bugging me throughout the whole entire thing. <laughs> One of the things that I would add about the BioBlitz trip is that it's ideal to have a smaller number of students in your group. We had about 18 students here with us and they worked in small teams of about three to five students. So they all kind of picked their friends, their group that they thought they could work well with. And they each had a parent chaperone that kind of sponsored them and walked around with them. And from that point, we kind of let them go. We gave them the tools. We taught them how to collect things in containers. And I really saw them growing, it becoming independent and working together. The teamwork was incredible. Um, they were kind of hesitant at first to maybe grab a bug or a spider and put it into the container. But after an hour or two, before you knew it, they were practically jumping on them just to grab the the, to collect, to make sure that we got every single thing that we could. And they were enthusiastic to identify. It was almost like they took ownership over these species that they collected and they went into the, to the center and they grabbed a field guide and they were like, what is this? And they'd go through, they were very thorough about finding exactly what the species was. Uh, they worked together. They, they, maybe some of them who weren't used to going in the woods and just walking around during the nighttime in the woods, they would go together in a small group and we had our headlamps on and uh, they were just very excited and uh, saying how much they were learning and how exciting it was to be walking through the woods and collecting things and not just collecting species, but I think that they found other things that they liked too. I think, um, Isaiah, you guys noticed something about the moon while we were out there. What was that that you guys saw? Oh, so when we were fishing, we decided to just lay down and just look up but there was no clouds, so it was kind of pointless. But then we realized that the moon had like a halo around it, and we were talking to one of the coastal students, and she said that it could either be bad weather or bad luck if you're superstitious. And I'm not, so I thought it was bad weather, but it wasn't bad weather. Yeah, we were supposed to have bad weather yeah, Saturday, weren't we? Thundering. But we got lucky. We had nice weather. 
Except Sunday. Except, well, Sunday it held off for us, right? Yeah. And it, it was nice. The weather was perfect. What else? Was there something that, what was there something that you found, Natalie, in the water? Didn't you find something in the water when we were collecting? Oh, there's a beaver. Oh, a crawfish. Oh, yeah, there's we found crawfish. And what else was it at night? We were just like, whenever we were going on there, there was a beaver just like, you know, <laughs> just like flying across the water. How did we know it was a beaver? I don't know. <laughs> Did we hear its tail slap or something in the water when we were going by? Yes. And then we saw a whole bunch of wood shredded um, in the woods where we thought that it had been chewing on the wood. Tell me another story. Um, so when we went kayaking, um, me and Haley, uh, we like went past the birdhouse on accident because we were going to go like around it. And we ran into like this weird thing and we thought it was a water moccasin bed. And I, I was like freaking out when Haley was screaming and like the boat, I mean the kayak was <laughs> doing this and I was trying to like get us out and I was so scared. Okay. So the kayaking was a good part yes, too. Yes, I love it. Because we actually went out into the water and you guys were collecting things. What types of things did you grab in there, Michaela, when you were out in the kayak? Some type of small bug that was on the bottom of the lake, really bad. I don't know where it was. I know there here. was a bug that was on like this wooden thing, but I didn't want to get it. Because I know some of you grabbed the lily pads and then you flipped them over and you saw that there were actually things under the lily pads I too when you collected pads. them. Yeah, I had you like did. Cool. legs and then I had a tail. Like, so, <laughs> so it was something living that we saw. And we were in the hey. same spot and Michaela, what did you find under the log? Was it the, the worm snake? Yeah, worm snake. That was one it looked like, like a snake. Worm. It was trying to escape from us, though. It tried to keep burying down in the dirt and just yeah, kept it scooping. It wiggled like a snake, so I thought it was a snake. Yeah. But you have to be very careful with the snakes, right? One thing we said was always let one of the adults handle the snakes just in case. So black widow, we caught, you know, a black widow, we caught a little worm oh, snake. But we said always make sure you're careful with the species. What oh, else? Yeah. Okay. So they had some things. They had some taxidermy things in there that we could identify, um, like coyote and uh, fox and bear. Fortunately, we didn't see any of those, right? Um, but then they also had some live animals in some of the containers that we could identify to kind of help us. They had a possum. A possum? Yeah, that's right. I know. A possum. But they let them out soon. That's right. Just collected them so we could all see them and then let them go. I saw a lot of tracks. We did see a lot of tracks. What tracks did we see? I saw deer tracks. Deer, deer tracks. Deer tracks. Deer tracks. Deer tracks. Because whenever um, I was sleeping and I got woke up, everybody kind of woke me up and left as soon as I woke up, so I didn't have time to go with y'all to the field or whatever. And so I went down through the trails, like to the water. And then while I was there on the little bridge where there's the water, there was a deer track and then it, like one that was like perfect and the ones behind it were like really big deep holes because I guess it was really squishy and mud so its feet kind of sunk in it. So. so that's one way we could tell if they were new tracks or old tracks. They were kind of fresh and clear. Very good. All right, what about our spider charmer? Where's our spider charmer? Oh no. Tell us about your spiders, Chandler. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I had this little vacuum thing and it like sucks up a lot of stuff. I even sucked up stuff you would not even like. A, I tried a butterfly and didn't turn out that well. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but I got like a, a mosquito. Um, I got a moth. Um, but then I was like, remember, Brian? I was like, after minute after minute, I was getting a, a spider and like I was going and you have I had my flashlight on and I saw like a little sparkle and I knew it was like a, a spider so I just sucked it up anyone that I saw so yeah. how many did you have all together like I'm not sure maybe more than 20 maybe I'm I not have sure. a picture of it oh what about the one we did where we well, sucked all the things up yeah it was yeah, like they had like a fight it was yeah like a fight it was World War there. three it was no literally we caught we caught like a Two daddy long legs. We caught some ants for like the spiders to eat. We caught like that boss. And the ants, spider. Were the, the ants were the ones who started eating everything and started killing everything. And then they, um, they killed this cricket that we got. Was it grasshopper or cricket? It was, no, it was a cricket. It was a cricket, and it was no, like we got a grasshopper. It was like that, that big. That and too. Yeah, and then we got like this weird fly thing I found on the ground, and oh, they killed that too. too. And these two spiders were like fighting. Yeah, half the stuff we brought back was dead. It was really sad. <laughs> so it, um, it was me, Shayna, Carla, and some 
volunteer, we were releasing a snake into the woods. Um, it was near an old barn, and so we released it. And then um, we were coming back, and Carla was like, let's go check out the barn. And Shana was like, nope, not me. So um, so we went, and then she, and then Carla, she saw these three snakes. Um, it was a racer snake, I think. And it was like sun tanning or whatever on like some, I, I don't know, but like it was, you know, where the sun was, and it was just laying there or whatever. And then Carla, of course, scared them all away. But so, but then we went into the barn, um, and we didn't find nothing. And then we just headed back to the center. But no, it was a fun experience. But at least you got to identify yeah. black racers. Yeah, I, was so we not, I, I wasn't expecting to see That's snakes. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were just joking. I didn't yeah, realize you guys actually found yeah, one. We did. That's great. And how many did we finally get? Almost 500. I think we had 515, but then some of those were repeats. So 400, 489 total. Oh, oh we were so close to 500. I thought we got 500. We so, we're out, so, was so what did we get? We got the most <laughs> plants and fungi. Over 200, almost 300 plants and fungi. Few fish, eight fish, 53 we birds, got more, more plants, a lot of we 93 invertebrates, land and aquatic. That's pretty good. Got a lot of stuff. So we know where we can improve next time. So you guys are ready to go again, right? Yeah. 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 All right. We want to get to the one in Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah one in Washington, D.C. National yeah. Geographic has a yearly bio blitz. So we kind of did our own yearly. local bio blitz, but National Geographic does a yearly bio blitz this year's in Washington, D.C. Wait, yearly as in like? Every year. May 21st and 22nd. Oh. Last year was in um, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, so every year they go somewhere different. Yeah. Just make one here. We could run it. We could. We could be the experts out there in the field, showing everybody what to do. That would be cool. All right. Thank you. So, last but not least, you guys want to go ahead and do a special thank you to all of our sponsors. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you, Bass Pro Shop. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Um, the Coliseum and Sakasti, <laughs> Office <laughs> Depot gave us stuff, Costco gave us supplies, Walmart, um, Food Lion, Sam's Club, Bass Pro Shop donated corn and bird seed. Um, we, we just couldn't have done it without our sponsors. They were fantastic. They helped make this trip almost free for everybody. And um, to, get, to get t-shirts and yeah, it was going to be kind of expensive for us, but because all the, all the local sponsors that helped us out, they, they really made a difference and, and I think made a wonderful experience for all of us. So we can't say thank you enough. Thanks. Yep.